Hello, in this video we're going to look at how to animate changes in materials or textures, uh, how to animate cameras and also how to animate light. Okay, so to get started, well I've already created these two shapes here, so I have a sphere and I have a cube here. Now what I'm going to firstly do is apply a material, so create a new material for this sphere. So I'm going to right click go to assign new material and I'm just going to pick something simple like blin or fong I might just pick fong all right now in the attribute editor I'll go over to fong1 and if you can't see your attribute editor just press control a until you see it and I'm going to go down to the color and I'm just going to apply a simple color like red all right now in one of the other videos I showed how to apply um, keyframes on the timeline and also how to apply keyframes on certain properties. So um, just like you can do with, um, so if we go to the channel box and we click on the shape and we see translate, rotate and scale properties there, you can apply keyframes to each of those individual properties by clicking on key selected. So for example, I can click on translate um, Y or right click, click on key selected. And so it's at position zero on this frame, on the first frame. And I could go to the 50th frame and I could type in something like 50. Um, actually, something a bit smaller than that. Five. <laughs> so we can actually see it. And I can right click while I'm still in the 50th frame. So right click on actual translate Y there, that text, and click on key selected. And so basically it's animating there, but it's only applying the keyframe to the translate Y property. So it's not applying any keyframes to anything else. So that's quite handy. All right. If we click on any of these other properties, um, we can also you know, add different keyframes there and different points on the timeline just for those properties. So that's really handy. So just as we can apply a keyframe to things like translate Y, translate Z, or rotate Y, or scale X, we can also do that with materials. So if we go back to the first frame and we press Control A to get the attribute editor back, we click on Fong 1, and we click on that color there and change it. If we right click on the text color, we can also click on set key and it works in the same way. So we've just now added a keyframe there for the color. If we go to the 50th frame and we change the color to maybe yellow and then right click on color and click on set key, we now have the sphere changing from red to yellow. So if we just um, scrub backwards and forwards, you can see it's red. So it goes orange and then it goes to yellow. All right, so it gradually changes from red to yellow. All right, so that there, we just animated um, the material properties, the color. All right, we can do the same thing with light. So what we might actually do is um, select this shape here, and we'll right click on that and click on a, assign new material, and we'll just give it a color, yeah, just so we can see some color. <laughs> All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a light. So I'll click on create and lights and I might add a uh, point light. All right, now with this point light, I might um, set the intensity to zero and while I'm still in the first frame and I need to grab the move tool to move it. So I'll just move it over this side. So there we go, we've got the point light right there. All right, so the intensity is zero, so there'll basically be no light. We can right click on intensity and click on set key. And then we can go to the 50th frame and we can increase the intensity. And we can right click on intensity and click on set key. Now we won't actually see anything here. Um, we won't actually see the light until we render it, but you can see as I move along the timeline, the intensity is gradually increasing until it gets to that value that I changed it to on the 50th frame. So if we go to the first frame, we go to the render view and click on render current frame. 
you'll see that there's no light. There's nothing visible at all. Now, if we just click a little bit further on the timeline, maybe the 15th frame and render that frame, you can see that there's a little bit more light now. We'll go to the 30th frame, render again. There's more light and that object's actually, that sphere's actually moved and changed color as well. And if we go to the 50th frame and render, there's a little bit more light and that object again has moved and changed to yellow. Now, what we've done there is just increase the light intensity, but we can also move the light. So we might have the light, um, we might have the light over here. And we might just, uh, might just increase that intensity a little bit more so we can just see at least a little bit of light. Right click intensity, click on set key. And we'll also, um, if we go to the channel box there for this light, we can also um, key select, right click, click on key select for each of those translations. So translate X, translate Y, and translate Z, even though we're only moving it on the um, Z axis. Anyway, we might, we might um, move it up and down a little bit. All right, so that's on the first frame. We'll go to the 50th frame and we'll move it over here, move it up a little bit, over that way, and we'll click on, right click, click on key selected for translate X, translate Y, and translate Z. Now we could do the same thing with rotation and scale, but because it's a point light, rotation isn't really gonna have any effect because the light is just shining outwards in all directions. So now we have the light also moving. All right, so light's also moving. Um, we've animated the light. So if we go back to our render, render view, render the first frame, you can see there's a little bit of light. So we did, um, we did actually set the, if we go back to the ed attribute editor, we did actually set the intensity to 0 0.9, something like that on the first frame. So there is a little bit of light. So if we move forward a few frames and render that again, it's a bit brighter now, there's more light. The light's also moving across. Render again on the 32nd frame. It's a bit brighter, the light is now moving over this direction. So this face of the cube has a bit more light on it. And then we'll go to the 50th frame. Render again. And now all of the light is shining on that side of the cube, that, that face of the cube. So light started over here and moved across that way. All right. Um, what I could do is also just move it up a bit so it shines on the top too. So I might go back to the channel box and just um, key select again. Okay, go back to render view and render the current frame. Now you can see there's light on top and as well as that side of the cube. Back to the first frame, there's minimal light intensity, not much light intensity. The light is over here, so it's shining on this face and this face. We go forward to the 25th frame, render again. It's now moved across and slightly up, so it's shining on all three faces. And then the 50th frame, it's moved right up and it's over this side, so it's just shining on these two faces of the cube. All right, so we have um, animated the material of an object, we've animated light. Now we can also do the same with the camera. So we click on Create, Cameras and Camera, grab the Move tool, Move that over here. Or we might rotate it a bit. And I might even scale it a bit. All right. We can add keyframes for all of those properties. So we can right click on them. We can click on key selected. All right. I've only changed the Y rotation there. Actually, I only changed the Z translation as well, but I've keyframed all of them. Scale. I've um, change the scale on all axes, so I need to keyframe all of those. Now I can go to the 50th frame and I can grab the move tool, move it over here, 
All right, rotate it. Running back that way, and might even scale it up a bit. Okay, now I can keyframe all of those changes um, on the channel box. All right, so just keep right clicking on the text for each of these properties. So the translation, rotation, and scale. Okay, that's done. Now if we scrub backwards and forwards on the timeline, you can see that um, the camera is spinning around, moving back, and it's also growing a bit in size. So it's moving, it's rotating, and it's scaling up. All right, so quite a few things happening there. An object is moving, it's changing color, light is moving and increasing in intensity, and a camera is also moving, rotating, and changing in size. Now, if we went to render this and we chose um, this camera to render with, then you could um, basically render from that camera view and have a moving camera panning around or zooming in on different objects in your animation. All right, that's basically it. Thanks for watching.